thank you. Thank you for letting me be here this morning. I'm not used to being up in front of people, so you'll have to excuse me. I'm not an orator. I'm not someone who speaks regularly, but it, it is an honor to be here before you today. You know, I am just a simple man. You know, I like to take something, I like to take a piece of wood, and I like to work on it and transform it and shape it into something that my friends and my family can use. You know, I like things that are real. I like things that are tangible that I can see and I can touch. And in a lot of ways, that's what made the first Christmas so difficult for me. Because really, looking back on it, Mary was something special. You wouldn't believe how excited I was when the arrangements were made for our engagement. I mean, I was just so excited about it all. I was thrilled. She was, she was the, the best thing that could happen to me. I mean, I was, a, I was an older man. I'd had time to get my, my business and my life together, and I had all of these dreams. I had all of these ideas of, of the family and the home that we were going to make, make together. And I mean, I just, and the times that we had to interact with each other, I, even though I was older, I felt like I was a, a younger boy in front of her because she always made me so nervous. But you know, all those dreams that I had, they came crashing down hard when I found out that she was expecting a baby. I mean, all I could think about when I found out is getting my hands on the man that did this to her. And so I went to her, and I demanded that she tell me what, what had happened, you know, I, I, so I could make sense of it all. I was like, because what was going through my mind is, I must have done something wrong. But she couldn't tell me what I wanted to know. I mean, all she could tell me is that, that, that God told her that she was going to have a baby. I mean, she actually had the nerve to say that, that she had never been with a man before. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not stupid. I, I know how the process works, okay? Another man I can understand. But God, I, what do I say to that? How do I respond to that? I just figured she was lying to protect somebody. I figured maybe something happened and she was embarrassed, she was in shame. Maybe somebody had hurt her. But you know how I said earlier how I like to, I, I'm somebody who understands some things that are real, things that are tangible, things I can get my hands on. I guess you could say that God took care of my shortcoming. Because that night I had a dream. And an angel appeared to me. He came to me and he told me, you know, Mary wasn't really lying after all. She was telling the truth. And the angel said to me, he said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. For what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Let me tell you something. When an angel appears to you, this is something that's very important. When an angel appears to you, you don't have to wonder if you were dreaming or not. I mean, most of the time I wake up, I'm like, wow, was that real? Did I, was that just me thinking? Was I just imagining things? Not this time. I knew for a fact that God had sent that angel to let me know that she was not lying. But you know, when I did wake up, I did, I woke up and I tried to make sense of it. I tried to understand what that message meant. And I realized pretty quickly that I couldn't. I couldn't make sense of it all. I mean, I couldn't understand what God was hoping to accomplish in all this. Yeah, he told me that he was going to save the people from their sins, but what did that mean? I mean, why would he do this? Why, what would he hope to accomplish in this? I mean, how would a little baby save the people from their sins? I mean, and why did it have to be Mary? I mean, why did it have to be my Mary? It couldn't have been somebody else's Mary. But again, like I said, it wasn't any easier to understand. 
And you need to know that for me to do what the angel told me to do, it was going to cost me. It was going to cost me to do what he said, just like it was going to cost her. Because, you know, when, when we would walk down the streets together, I would see all the looks that people would give us. I would see people kind of turning and whispering, making comments. You know, there were people, people that I thought were my friends. They stopped talking to me because I didn't put her aside. You see, that was one thing because even though I was so mad, even though I was angry, it didn't take very long for my anger to go down because I realized how much I cared for her. And you know, even though she could, uh, she could have gotten a lot of trouble in our culture. And I was going to break our engagement quietly and I was gonna see to it that, that nobody knew about it, that she was not gonna be hurt. But that was when the angel told me to not be afraid. But there were a lot of people, my friends told me I should have. There were people that, that stopped doing business with me because I didn't. But I realized, you know, when I had that decision to make, you know, after I woke up in those things, I realized that this was hard. And I realized that as much as I had had this decision to make, as much as God had chosen Mary for this process, he had also chosen me. He had chosen me to be her husband. He had chosen me to be a father to this child. I mean, everything in life that I was going to do, this little baby was going to see. And I didn't always understand that. You know, with the, the friends, with the lost business, I mean, those are things that I couldn't fix. I'm usually pretty good at fixing things, but I couldn't fix all of this. And I wish I could say it, it got easier, even though I got used to those stairs. But, you know, trusting in all of this, trusting that God knew what he was doing was so important. Trusting that, just hoping that I would be obedient to what he asked me to do was more important to me than all the stares. It was more important to me than the business and the whispers and all of those types of things. But it just kept dawning on me, how could he possibly use me? Like I said, I'm just a simple guy. I, I like things pretty orderly. I don't like things to be uncertain. How could he use me? And, you know, it didn't take long in all of that process, even despite all the things going around. It didn't, it didn't take long for my hopes and my dreams of our family to return. You know, that joy started springing up in my heart once again in thinking about it and thinking about the family that we would have. All of those dreams and those hopes, they returned. And life was improving. You know, life was getting better, and I was really excited uh, about where our future was taking us. But like I said, things didn't get easier. You know, it wasn't very long after Mary came back from visiting her, her cousin Elizabeth that the town, our town, got notice that the Roman government in their great wisdom was ordering a census. And they were ordering everybody to be registered. We got this notice from Rome. Everybody had to be registered so they could count us so for tax purposes, of course. I mean, I hear y'all have some of the same issues with taxes today. But there was an uproar in town over this census because most of my people, they, they, they hated the fact that the Romans were here. I mean, they, they, we were just longing for the day that the Messiah would return and would kick out the Romans and would reestablish the kingdom of Israel, would once again put a man on the throne of David. And, you know, this, 
There are others, though, in our town that, that like the fact the Romans were here because, I mean, it meant business, it meant money, it meant prestige and things like that. So they, they started arguing amongst themselves about that. But I just had to go down there. I had to see this notice for myself, and I had to take it, and I had to hold it in my own hands because I, I didn't like what it required of me and my family. See, it required us to go to our hometowns in order to register. We had to travel in order to pay our taxes. I, you get to put yours in the mail. That sounds a lot easier to me. But we had to travel. And Mary, she was getting larger. But you know, the whole family had to go. And so we, we decided to time our trip to Jerusalem with, with a religious festival that was there. So we were going and, and our family was going and, and the roads were crowded. And in a lot of ways, we almost treated it like it was a House of David family reunion because both of us could trace our family history back to the House of David. Both Mary and I could. And so that meant that we had to go back to the city of David. That meant we had to go back to Bethlehem. But, you know, it was a three-day trip. And I knew this was going to be hard on Mary. She was getting further along. She was getting larger and larger. I mean, just walking around town was getting difficult for her. Much less a journey like that. And, you know, I, I, you hear all the kinds of stories of people as they travel on the roads of, of robbers and bandits attacking whole groups of people and people getting hurt and killed. And I, I just couldn't think of anything. I, I, I didn't want to think of anything like that happening to Mary. I mean, surely God would not make us go. Surely he wouldn't want to do this to her. Surely he wouldn't want to do this to, to this special child of his. What would he hope to accomplish by making us travel to Bethlehem, of all places, in this hardship? And so we, before we left with the family, we prayed for a safe journey. We prayed that God's hand would be with us, that he would be taking care of us along the way. And you know, usually, I don't mind this trip so much. I mean, I've been to Jerusalem before, and, and usually it is something that is so beautiful. I just can't tell you, if you've never been, I can't tell you how amazing and how beautiful it is to come up over the last part of the road and to see Jerusalem there on the top of the hill. And it's just a bright, gleaming city. And what's more amazing than that is that you can see the temple in it with its white stone just rising up. Oh, it's one of the most beautiful things you could ever see. But you know, this, this time was, was pretty different. I mean, it's like I was seeing things happening through, through a new set of eyes because I had Mary with me. Approaching Jerusalem was harder this time. Because as we go, went along, as the closer we got to the city, the more and more evidence we saw of the Roman presence. I mean, there were people, I don't even know how to say it. There were people that were there as we walked along that were lining the roads, you know, evidence of, of their punishment by Rome. And I, I guess I never really paid attention to it before. But they were there, and, and they were in pain. And it was not something that I wanted her to see. And there were many instances that we would be walking by, we would hear people, these men crying out, and I would stand between them and what was going on, and I would cover her eyes so she wouldn't have to see what was happening. But, you know, we, we did finally make it to Bethlehem. We made it through Jerusalem. It was crowded. It was busy. And Mary, I could tell she was totally exhausted. But the good thing about it, about going home, about going to family and making this trip before, is we still had family that lived there in Bethlehem. You know, the, the place was crowded. It had, uh, there was the, the, the festival going on in Jerusalem. There, there was, you know, everybody had to go back to their hometown to register. And when we got there, you know, we, we went to the guest room, the upper room that was used for, for people to stay. 
man, it was already pretty full. I mean, it was crowded with family that we hadn't seen in years. And of course, some of them had heard about the unusual circumstances, and we saw some whispers, we saw some comments. You know, we, we stayed there in, in the guest room, what you translate as is in. But you know, when, when the time came for the baby to be born, it was so crowded, that place, that room was no, no place to have a baby. I mean, let me ask you, ladies, uh, how many of you would like to give birth in a r crowded room full of your relatives? Anybody want to take up that one? I didn't think so. We didn't want to do that either, and it was actually a blessing for us to have that room, to, to have uh, the, the ability to go into the room where the animals were kept. That was a blessing for us. Because really what it meant is it meant privacy. It meant a place where everybody wasn't running in and out. It meant privacy for us. And I, you know, I let her go in there, and I let her look it over, and I let her examine it and, and make sure it was okay, that it met her standards. You know, I let her make that decision. Because, you know, I had made the mistake one time. Of we went to the market, and we were looking for things to, to, to buy to put in our home. And there was a time I picked up something, and I was like, oh, hon, this is great. You know what she said when she looked at it? That, is, that ugly thing is not going in my house. So I, I let her make that decision about whether this was okay or not. But I could see that she was starting to breathe harder. I could see that she was starting to wince with pain. And so I, we knew that the time was close. I mean, she was young. She didn't always understand all these things. She hadn't been around too many babies that were born. And I'm a man. I mean, what do I know about these things? I, 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 I was definitely out of my element with this. And I just felt like an awful husband. You know, how could I be letting this happen to her? Shouldn't I be taking better care of her? I mean, why weren't we safe at home? I mean, what if she died? What if, what if, what if the baby died? How could God possibly let this happen? But like I said, we were there in the, in the stable, and it meant privacy. And, and we did have some other family that were there. So we were not totally alone, but the whole time, you know, she was in labor. I was just pacing back and forth. I was wringing my hands. I was, you know, checking in and getting anything I could to, to do to help them and do whatever I could. And, you know, the hours went by, and I was getting more and more worried, more and more concerned. And finally, I heard a baby cry. And let me tell you, it was one of the prettiest sounds I've ever heard. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't too long before uh, they called me in and said, do you want to see the baby? And I went in. You know, Mary, she looked beautiful. And she had taken him, you know, she had laid him down in, in the manger that we had there. That, that was the best that we could do for a crib. But she was just getting up, and she, she went over, and she picked him up, and and she tried to hand him to me. And of course I was, I don't, I don't even know how to hold the, the kid. You know, it's like, what do I do? And she showed me how to hold him. And, I, and you know, I don't know who felt more awkward at that moment, me or him. But he was just so at peace. But I mean, he looked even smaller in my hands. He looked so innocent, he looked so vulnerable. Mary, you know, she was still a little weak, so she went ahead and sat down, and I was just kind of enjoying the moment, just sitting there holding him and carrying him and rocking him. And the night was getting further and further on. Morning was getting near when all of a sudden I heard some voices near the entrance. And I actually heard one of the voices. They sounded a little bit like they were arguing, and one of them said, you know what, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go back to the flocks if we don't find this place soon. And that kind of put all those little warning signs off in your head and started going off. I'm like, oh, man. 
And I just started praying, Lord God, just send them on their way. Don't have them bring their problems anywhere near me or my baby. But I could tell they started coming closer. And so I just, I, I, I put the baby down as quickly as I could. And I, I went around looking for something to, to find that I could defend my family with if I had to. And of course, as soon as I put him down, guess what started happening? He started crying. Oh, great. Shh. Just keep it down. We don't want any trouble. And I heard one of them say, what was that? You hear that? And they started coming closer. And I put on the meanest voice that I could at the time, and I said, you better just keep on moving if you know what's good for you. Well, they came to the entrance. They said, we are looking for a newborn baby. My first thought was that they, you're not taking my baby. An angel, they said, appeared to us in the fields telling us that a Savior had been born this morning, and we decided to go look for him. May we come in? And that was a I was not expecting to hear that. And I looked over at Mary, who, you know, and, and she kind of nodded, and I said, okay, come on in. Six of them came in. And let me tell you, they were a rough-looking bunch. It's pretty nervous. But you know, the first one, he came in. He practically ignored me. First thing he saw was the manger. And he saw Jesus in the manger, and he just came over, and he just fell down to his knees. He said, it's true. I, I almost didn't believe it. There he is, just like the angel had said, wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And you know, I, to be honest, I didn't think much of it. You know, when I, when I put him down in the manger, I, I, I didn't really think much of it. I didn't. It was just something I had to do because I, in case I had to defend my family. But that in seemingly insignificant moment had been prophesied, had been foretold by God's messenger to these men. And I didn't know what to make of that. I mean, something that I did in just a moment's thought, God already knew. God was expecting. God was anticipating. He was relying on that moment to be a sign for these men. And you know, I've learned that God's miracles are so often work that way. They're not usually the, the big flashy sign in the sky kind of a thing. I mean, how could they? When so many times he wants you and me to participate in those miracles, to have a part to play. And if they were something big, huge, and flashy, most of us would never feel a part of it. But he uses us in moments that we never expect to accomplish miracles. You know, the other men that came in, they said, what's his name? And I told him his name was Jesus. And of course, they just, they just was like, oh, the Lord saves, they said. Truly, that is the right name for the Savior. And all of them then just, they just came around, and then all of them fell down. And they would lift up their hands, and they were praising God. And, you know, sometimes I could see them, they were reaching in, they were just looking at the baby, just hoping he would take their finger. And they were touching, just like, just to make sure that, that he was real, that they weren't imagining things. And I was sitting there thinking, it's like, God, this is a special baby. What are you doing bringing a group of shepherds here for, for this child? And then I remembered where we were. We were in Bethlehem. We were in the city of David. We were waiting for the Messiah. We were waiting for the kingdom of David to be restored. And what better way to welcome this child? than with shepherds, as our own King David once was himself. 
And it amazed me that these men, these grown men, would fall to their knees and worship for our little baby. And I say, our little baby. I mean, I knew technically he was not mine. But I quickly became to see, see him as mine. Because it was so special to know, to be a part of it, to see it. God had chosen me to be used for this purpose. And I need to tell you that Jesus was the greatest gift on that first Christmas. Everything else that happened was just all in relation to this little child that was here. And you know, I still don't understand everything. It still doesn't all make sense to me. Why Mary and me? Why, you know, how did God expect to, to do something? I still had those, all those kinds of questions. But you know, we were just trying to be obedient in it all. We were just trying to follow what God told us to do, regardless of it made sense to anybody else. But you know, I know that he wants that same thing for you. For you to be just, just to be obedient to what he tells you to do, even if it doesn't always make sense to you. Even if there are people looking at you like you're crazy. He wants us to follow him and, and walk with him. I mean, there are truly, there are miracles that happen all around you that God wants you to be a part of in touching people's lives in making a difference. And you would miss it. I mean, I would have missed this if I hadn't followed what the angel told me to do. You know, I had the privilege of seeing Jesus' entrance into this world. You know, it's, it's my understanding that, that, that you know and you were able to see or understand how things resolved, how Jesus really did become our Savior. Oh, I wish I could have seen that. I bet it was so beautiful. I bet it was so glorious. I mean, knowing, knowing God, knowing my son, just what he was going to be doing, oh, I wish I could have seen that. To see him standing there, you know, at, at the temple with his arms lifted up to heaven saying, Father, you sent me into this world to forgive their sins, to heal them from what separates us. Now do so. And to think that, you know, how the priests would have been so excited to have him there in that moment, you know, doing that so they wouldn't have to, to, to do their sacrifices anymore. I mean, I remember when they, they welcomed him when he was just a boy and he was answering their questions and they thought it was great. They were amazed at him. I can only imagine how, how amazed they were when he was a man coming to do what God sent him to do and, and, and to truly take away the sins of the people. I wish I could have seen it. I bet it was beautiful. Okay, I, I'm confused. Everything in this room it, it is beautiful. I mean, everything is nice. Everything lets me think of that the blessing of God is here. I mean, this is, this is a building set up to, to, to honor Jesus and what, what my son did, isn't it? I have, I have to ask you. What is that doing here? Back in my day, that was, that was not something you want to decorate your house with. That was something ugly. That was something that meant death. That was something that, was, that the Romans brought with them. I mean, we, had, we wanted nothing to do with that. What is it doing here? Brother Glenn, can you, can you explain that to me? Can you... Explain to me why the cross is here. Because that's what I, I didn't want Mary to see. That's what I tried to, to shield from her. What does that mean? 